Okay, so today we're going to be having a quite a heated topic um, covered in today's podcast, episode 9. And we're going to be talking about free DLC versus paid DLC. Now, quite a lot of developers go for the paid route with things like microtransactions and go with the way that they can get as much money because developing a game is a very expensive thing and also the developers obviously need to pay the salaries and the licenses etc so they can create more games in the future. However, the community don't particularly like it because it divides the player base and it can work out very expensive. So we're going to be having a, bit, a few comparisons in today's video and possibly come out with an overall winner as such um, at the end of it. We do have Dan in today's episode of the podcast, which is Yo, a up, nice addition uh, once again. So overall, Dan, what are your basic thoughts of paid versus free DLC? Well... It depends really a lot on the type of game, how much you're paying for it. Um, and there have been several examples that I can rattle off that um, have been good models for paid um, and good models for free DLCs. So, uh, and there's also been really awful ones that are very prominent in today's, uh, in, t in the game of today. <coughs> Destiny. So... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> wow, that was sorry. a that was bad Sorry, um, sorry. <laughs> what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it really, it really does. Um, it's it's a bit of a, it's a it's a big issue that really needs to be um, to be looked at. Um, but it's it's more of a problem of um, how much is your game worth, and then how much content are you adding, and is it actually worth the price that you're saying it is? Because a lot of games now. They're asking for a lot of money up front for pre-orders. They're giving away exclusive pre-order bonuses. Um, but then when the DLC comes out and you think, hey, wasn't this meant to actually be part of the game? You're missing out on a lot of stuff because the de uh, the developers wanted to cut it a little bit. But that's just my own personal personal opinion. So Yeah. Um, I, I personally am going to give a few examples now. Um surprisingly the one developer that i thought would never do such a thing is actually doing something about this situation ea have been known in the past to be trying to haul in the money as much as possible yeah. uh you have a look at their ultimate um team additions to their sports titles uh, where you can buy coins, you can buy uh, extra little bits and bobs to go in the game. You also have uh, season passes with things like Battlefield, Titanfall, and um, Star Wars Battlefront. However, you have a look at the way that the development team and EA as a whole have been going recently with their new CEO, I believe, that came in a few years ago. Um, who has tried to put a very prominent uh, on we're here for the players kind of ethos around EA and they have started to do free DLCs. This started with right. Battlefield 4. Um, they added at the end of the game's life cycle three or four, four, three or four free maps including a night map Zavol 311, a community map which was designed by the community, and we also received a um, Battlefield 2 map remade in Battlefield 4, which hadn't really been thought of before, even though people called for it. Um, not many people had like expected to see a another remaster of a map made in Battlefield 4, and it's a really good map as well. Now. Sadly, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to try and think of the name later on in the video, and I'll try and remember it. But um, basically, Titan 4.2 is also having completely free DLC. 
This right. is a good step in the correct direction. However, you have a look at other companies like Activision with Destiny, where they provide the players with a season pass, which is £45. Then they provide you with another DLC a year later, which costs £45 on its own. And then they provide you with another DLC, which is going to be released this year, which is also, most likely, going to be yet another £45. It adds up and it divides the player base. And I, a lot of fans call for uh, the developers to give away free maps and free content, but still have yeah. a option along the side, like they do with Rainbow Six Siege, to be able to have possibly some XP bonuses, some in-game extra rewards for 15, 20 pounds, for example, that provide you with a little bit of extra content, but you don't have the separation of the player base like you do with these other games that have season passes that divides the player base because people go onto the go onto that DLC when it launches, everybody goes off the base maps pretty much if they have the DLC. So it leaves the people without the DLC alone and they don't have many players to play with and then people that do want to play the DLC because they bought it at a later date might not have people playing on the maps they want to play because people have gone back to the base maps because that's where all of the newish players will be or the people that didn't buy the DLC will be. So it kind of like, it's good to see the free DLC stuff but then you kind of see the point with the kind of like, you don't really see the point with the kind of like season pass stuff because it grants you access to early content and possibly a few XP bonuses, but you don't necessarily get a huge amount in reward for you having that membership. Um, what, yeah. what, what, what do you think about the kind of like way that EA has moved and in some cases Ubisoft and a few of the other major publishers and developers what do you think about the way that they've started to listen to the community and start to drop free bits of content here or there? The Division is a good example as well because they've had free updates uh, throughout the game's launch actually adding new content, not just kind of like a few bug fixes here or there like games used to. Yeah. Um, I think... I th I... I think some companies have done it right and some companies have done it wrong. So a company that's done it really right and um, is a massive company. So they, I don't really think they've taken much of a hit to it either. Um, with um, GTA 5, that is completely, all of their DLCs are completely free. Um, and that's really good because... Um, their player fa their player base is m absolutely massive. Um, I forgot about and... um, GTA's free DLC. They're still supporting the game with yeah. free updates three They're years later. It. Like yeah, they released I... an update the other day. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never played, I've never paid for any of their DLCs that they've brought out because they've all been free, and that's the beauty of of that game. Yes, they, but they've done it correctly. Um, they do have microtransactions in there, um, and I think that's not a, not a bad thing because most of the stuff you can buy with micro, microtransactions are they're not massive game changing um, features. They're just aesthetics, or it's just a bit more cash to buy a gun, um, or a bit more cash to buy this certain vehicle. Um, but all of it is available through the normal game, the normal base game, and anything that they do bring out in the future, it's all. Um, free DLC, so anybody yeah. can get it as long as they pay the fifty pounds um, or however much it is at this current point in time. That's how you're getting a full fleet game, no extra DLCs, no extra um, parts uh, necessary. Now that is the perfect example of excellent. This is a great place to throw free DLC. Um, I would say a, a different. If we look at this this from a different angle, if we have a look at the Witcher 3, both of their DLCs are paid for, but it's for good reason, because each of their DLCs are 80-something hours each, 
and yeah. I've played the base game for about 125 hours, roughly, and I'm still not even halfway through the base game. So the amount of money that you actually pay versus the game that you're getting, they are actually giving you a really good bargain. Whereas somebody like Destiny, you pay pretty much a, the brand, the cost of a brand new game, and you're getting what? A few new maps, yeah. uh, a kind of rubbish storyline to go along. Well, not a rubbish storyline, yeah. but um, an, a very an bad storyline. Story yeah, an average storyline. Um, and you're, and I say this as a Destiny, absolute Destiny fanboy. I love Destiny. I can't get enough of it sometimes. At the moment, I've been a bit of a kind of, ah, oh, there's going to be Rise of Iron. It's going to come out. It's going to cost me another 40 quid. And I'm just going to sit here while everyone's running around with black galahorns going, oh, look at me, how amazing am I? Yeah. And I'm sitting here broke going, well, I can't even get half the stuff you guys are getting. So yeah. I would understand if they were like, if you paid, uh, if you it was a, a, a DLC that cost you a tenner, and if you pay £15, you get a few extra skins that are exclusive if you pre-order and pay another five pounds on top of it now that is understandable to go because they've already got a microtransaction in game yeah yeah so with the currencies uh, and stuff yeah yeah because and also the what... way that you can level up your characters as well uh mm -hmm. they have that spark of light which you can buy as the dlc as well well microtransaction yeah. um but the good thing is you can only use it if you're a low level character and you're trying to get up to the same level as your mates, which yeah. is always a good. And you thing. get one for free anyway. Yeah, you always get one for free. Um, but it's very disappointing to look at something like this and go, "Well, it's a good game. It's an okay game, but you're asking me to pay somewhere in the region of about 180 quid for something." If you start, if you played, if you played Destiny from day one and then you bought all the DLCs one after the other after the other, like I did, like we have, uh, yeah, we have. We, oh, you pay somewhere in the region of, well, let's say we, uh, you had Rise of, Rise of Iron, that's £220. Who the hell in their right mind goes, yes, I'm going to pay £220 for, the, uh, for this game? It's not even, it's worth about 40 total. Now, I just, I just I don't understand how they can justify the expense that they go into paying for those DLCs because yeah. they had barely any free updates. And those free updates are just bug fixes now and again. And also is the bugged. kind of like neon light thing that they did in April. That was good, but you weren't allowed to like go out and buy colours from the actual world. No, like no. if I spend glimmer on getting certain colours, I definitely would have. But it's yeah. ridiculous. I, I, I that's one of the bad ones, in parts, my personal opinion. Part of the problem with the whole DLC situation. You have a look back um, at GTA 5. GTA 5, the free DLCs, well, all of them have been free DLCs, and I'd say for probably about two years continuously, they released a free DLC every single month. In the past year, 18 months or so, they've died down a bit, and now they're about one every three to six months. But they're still pumping out content uh, three years later. So that's a fairly good thing. But then you have a look at the sales figures of GCA mm -hmm. 5. GCA 5 yeah. has been in the charts almost continuously for that three-year period. And as of the 3rd of February, has sold 60 million copies. Goodness. Most games that are smaller than GTA don't have that many sales. They typically can't afford it. So that is why the indie developers tend to go towards the DLC scheme because they want to add extra content to the game, but they might not necessarily be able to afford it. You then have a look at things like Destiny and... <laughs> I feel really, really embarrassed for Bungie. I really do, because you have a look at Bungie with three four, uh, sorry, with Microsoft when they did yeah. the Halo franchise up until I believe it was Reach, was it? Uh, yes, Halo Reach. Um, they had amazing storylines. They yeah. have 
a proportion of the team still at Bungie working on Destiny. Um, and they had a really good storyline. They had a fairly well established competitive multiplayer fan base. And it was a very successful franchise. You then have a look at Destiny and they've moved over to Activision as a publisher. Activision have basically tried to milk as much money out of the player base as much as they can. Now, part of the issue with not necessarily being affiliated with Sony or Activision or Bungie, we don't know who has made that end goal decision as to who like as to what is free and what isn't typically this is up to the publisher it's the yeah. publisher that decides right we're doing this and the developers if they have enough persuasion they might possibly be able to get this extra little bit of free dlc thrown in like we did the other month with destiny mm. but then you have a look and you think hang on is it sony that's doing this because Sony has exclusive rights to extra content and has a huge marketing deal with Destiny as an IP. Mm. Yeah. And you can't necessarily work out from the public view. However, I suspect that once we have got Destiny 2, if there is ever a Destiny 2, because Destiny was delayed, multi uh, was delayed once, and then we've had all of these huge... Well huge price tags for what is in relative to amount of playtime, a fairly small DLC with about five, ten hours of playtime. That was probably the amount of playtime we had with the latest one at least, the Taken King. Yeah. Um Destiny two, I would be surprised if Activision go if Bungie goes the same route. However, I would also not be surprised if they go the same route because they want the money because they want to invest it apparently into their next games and uh, destroy the player base in some aspects because a lot of the content with Destiny because it's online you can't necessarily access because it's behind a paywall basically and yeah. if you want the full storyline you need to pay for the DLC even though it doesn't really have much of a story, if somebody is a huge fan of the franchise, like yourself, yeah. you want to be able to experience every single moment of the game the way that it's meant to be experienced. And yeah. having £45 price tags on DLCs, which have £10 of content, I mean 10 hours of content... Um, not even. No, not even. I Like, uh, yeah. the... The problem, the problem with the Destiny DLCs, if we're going to talk about Destiny DLCs, is um, they include, uh, in total, probably no more than a few hours of... I don't know exactly, but a, a few hours of main storyline content that yeah. doesn't really reward you so much. Um, as well, t uh, f very much, especially if you're at a higher level. Um, and then if you have a look at all of the the raids and things um the raids you can't most of the raids you can't actually do unless you have people to do uh, to uh, to play with previously who are at the same level as you or very close to so what you need to do is you need to go outside of the game go find a bunch of people online and be like hi guys let's all do this together you go into the game you play you play about and then everyone goes their separate ways because hardly anyone wants to play destiny together there's a few people who will go yeah let's add i'll come back and we'll play we'll play constantly we'll do this and that and the other and then that's good um but in total when you when you have a look at the dlcs they don't really add much more than maybe one uh, one or two strikes um uh a, a massive raid and um a low uh, and a few missions here or there that's just main story content and then you've got a load of um, weapons that they add, a few pieces of armor, but they're mainly just ski uh, different reskins or different retextures of already guns that are in the game. Um, and then you have the um, Crucible, which is basically the player v player, which is where Destiny 
excels quite a lot but a lot of people that's what a lot of people will mainly just play you don't get a lot of people who play story content anymore it's quite difficult to find anybody who is really up for doing story content unless it's a massive raid everybody's max level and they're like yeah let's do this all on hard we'll get a bunch of people and we're not going to help anybody come to the top because that's one of the problems with the destiny community they want to just have people who are already at the top they don't want people who are at the uh, lower down and then go oh let's help this lower person they hardly ever want to do that which is quite annoying i know if you're a destiny player and you're listening to this right now you're like oh no that's that's definitely not me it probably isn't that but there are a lot of people out there who really don't like helping noobs or low level people and i've experienced it myself as i don't play destiny all the time so i'm not on top of everything but the the problem is they're asking too much money for all of their all of this content and it's not a lot of new content it and it's it's really annoying because a lot of the from a from a, a person who likes to play story content and loves to enjoy a good story and get lost in um in worlds with fantastic creatures and and mythology my, mythology and all of that um Des- all of Destiny's good features and all of their interesting story content, you have to leave the game and go to your PC or your phone or your tablet or whatever, and you have to look it up on their website. You can't yeah. eat te- you They don't tell you anything in game about what the hell is going on. You're chucked in and expected to know everything, but you don't know ev- everything, and you have to look around the world to find ghosts to find the cards that tell you stuff and they tell you in really cryptic ways so hardly so a lot of the time you spend most of your destiny if you want to get uh, get the story of destiny you have to spend a lot of your time on youtube looking at people who have actually figured out what the hell is going on yeah and into yeah. a nice video to help explain it to you so something like that where you don't really have a lot of the uh, well, you don't have any of this, well, most of the story all encompassed, all into a throne. Now, here is what is going on. This is what you're doing. This is who you are. Um, this is what the world was. Um, yeah. Then you're not going to have a good game. That's why That's why the Halo saga is so good. That's why um, the Uncharted series is so good. That's why the Tomb Raider series is so good. None of those games say, oh, yeah, go off to your computer and then research about half the shit exactly. that's going on. They tell you 90% of it up front and then go, have fun with the game, explore the new story. Yeah. So and that is a, or the, or the, they do it like The Division, which seems to work fairly well where you have intel, which mm. tells you bits of the background behind the plot on the storyline, but you don't need to go to the secondary device to do it, and you don't have to do it unless you want the full storyline and to get yeah. the achievements. Like... It seems to be fairly well balanced with that. Um, yes. My overall opinion with uh, DLC in terms of storylines is if it adds a major component to the storyline, fine, do a DLC. but And do it as a paid DLC. But don't charge the fans which have already spent a proportion of their money on your game um buy another co- uh, the equivalent of another copy of your game yeah. just to get a few hours of extra content yeah that however should, that mostly should have been included in the base game yes yeah whether you have a look at multiplayer multiplayer is something that i have always always tried to follow because okay. I've always enjoyed multiplayer games, I've put thousands of hours into the Battlefield franchise, I've put in excess of 200 hours, I think, into The Division, I think, don't quote me on that, I think I put about 11 or 12 days, I'm not 100% sure, and then we have Destiny, etc. All of these rely on an online player base. It's something that I have always followed, and until recently, I never really completed storylines of games. I played one or two missions and then kind of dropped out. It's only been in the past year or two where I've tried to play through the whole of the storyline and get a taste of the multiplayer as well. 
and See, I'm, different, I'm a different person. I I absolutely love storyline content. That's that's where uh, that's where for me a game excels. Um, so uh, we've really got different perspectives on the whole DLC, free or not free perspective. So yeah, yeah, it's it's um interesting. But you have, I mean, what I was about to lead on to was. I I understand if developers need to put some form of transaction into their game. Yeah. I personally would prefer to have micro DLCs where you can buy if you want a um currency pack for in game for example you have a look at GTA 5 with its GTA Online dollar system. Mm. You don't have to invest money into it. You don't have to buy it, but you do have the option to do it. Yeah. Mobile games have followed that setup for years. You have a look at Pokemon Go, which launched last week. Um, they have 10 million downloads on Android, let alone the other um ios platform and it's probably gone up a lot more since then but mm. they have dlc uh micro dlcs in the game ranging from i believe it was 80 pence to 80 pounds now so, uh... 80 pounds is a lot of money however there will be some people which will buy that and it's a free-to-play game so you can kind of like understand it but you then have a look at storyline, like, with, okay, with multiplayer, you can, like, do it with, out having free DLC, because it splits up the, uh, the, with multiplayer, if you do pay DLC, it splits up the user base, which yeah. results in people dropping off the game, because they don't necessarily want to invest the extra 30 or 40 pounds or however much money you have asked the fans of the game to invest into it they don't necessarily want to invest that you have a look at uh, the division for example the division's player base has dropped off like a rock mm. i'm not sure why i kind of understand why it wasn't necessarily the game that people thought it would be and only the loyal fans or people that picked up the game in the recent weeks are still playing yeah the dark zone wasn't what people thought it would be and also, with the with the, dark the, zone. the free dlc stuff <laughs> is good but it needs a lot more free content and a lot more stuff for people to explore for it's actually become worth getting the season parts. And because yeah. they've added the underground missions as a paywalled DLC, which actually adds one of the best ways to play the game in yes. terms of leveling up and best, getting better gear, they are basically implementing a pay to win model. Because yeah. you have to buy the DLC to play underground. Underground is the best way to get gear. The best way to advance throughout the game and complete the raids and finish the raids and to do moderately okay within the dark zone and gear score and level etc is by having decent gear. To get the decent gear you need to go into underground which is behind a paywall. So it's kind of locked down the player base to the people that bought the season pass and need to try out the content or want to try out the content. And the people that are like new or really die hard for the franchise. But then you have a look at games like Rainbow Six Siege. People have dropped off, they've come back, they've come back. Because it's a free DLC. It goes mm. through that cycle. It also has community events and community competitive championships which people can take part in. So people come back and they don't necessarily mind because... Yeah, they might go away for two months or something like that, but they've got free DLC to come to in a month or two. So yeah. they'll just come back in a month or two, play the free DLC for however long they play it, and then possibly 
kind of like come back again and again and again because it's free. They don't need to invest their hard-earned cash towards something that in the past would have been free or shouldn't in some ways be excluded from the game, as some people call it. Because even though it might not necessarily been cut from the game, it is something that could be implemented into the game for free or has in some cases been implemented, I mean, cut from the base game to be put into DLC to get more money. In some cases, we never know, we never know. But it's, it's interesting, but I certainly think that a game like The Witcher 3, which adds hundreds of hours of content, Fallout 4, in a very similar concept, I know that these are both RPGs, so they both kind of like, are in a franchise, in a... Um, kind of like genre which has always had hundreds and hundreds of hours of content for people to invest their time into so paid DLC is I see perfectly fine for games which are going to have hundreds of hours added to the game with that DLC but I don't think it should be £60 for that DLC every single year it should be £40 for a season pass which grants you to two huge DLCs, for example. That's what The Witcher 3 did. Multiplayer DLCs, I believe, should be free. Or if they still need the revenue to be able to get that extra content developed and the future titles, etc. Have the micro DLC. Have a season pass. But the season pass grants you to, I don't know two weeks early access to the free content and a bit of an xp bonus some extra community events or ladders or something like that yeah that kind of works or you could do or you could follow the setup that csgo has used for many years which is all of the content is free it doesn't necessarily drop particularly regularly however they use a community marketplace which sells skins it sells cosmetic items and it makes you look a little bit better but it doesn't affect your visual stats in the game doesn't affect i mean sorry doesn't affect any of your stats in the game so it's not like the division in this case at the moment where you can get better gear because you pay for this dlc because you can only access this content if you pay for it because it's only cosmetic, cosmetic and it's optional. You don't have to buy it. And then you also get the case drops and stuff like that. But that system kind of works. However, you do have the opposite side where you do have these illegal schemes like with these betting websites and things like that. But the way to avoid that is by doing something like Rocket League is doing with its future update where this whole marketplace scheme as such with these cases that drop yeah you've got to buy money to um buy the keys i believe to open them however there is no marketplace uh that integrates into the steam api therefore there will not be any illegal websites where you can gamble these skins away for real money or other things and led by people that say they didn't have anything to do with them or hidden sponsorships or anything like that because you might not necessarily encounter any of these sponsorships with it because it's something that's uh, not going to be around in terms of a online scandal based website or big YouTubers that think that they can get even more money from um their uh, kind of like user base by promoting something which isn't necessarily accepted. i love how just um, so oddly specific with how how with, with the with, uh, you wanted to paint out exactly what you wanted our uh, wanted our listeners to think think of when when you were when you were describing these circumstances it was i i found that very moving it was it was good um but with the in terms of actual uh, when you're looking at this from a market perspective, uh, when you think of from us 
let's let's say you're a business person and you've just created you, you you're you're a game developer you've just created a brand new game you think it's absolutely amazing it's going to be the next biggest thing so you look at different models and you think which models are successful and one of the models which is the most surprisingly successful that should that that by all accounts shouldn't be successful but it is is the world of warcraft model and the world of warcraft model is the most unique it's the first of its kind it was the first of its kind and it nobody's ever tr everybody's tried to be exactly like it but nobody's ever gotten there and that model is you buy the game you pay um monthly installments to play the game and then you get access to all the free content but each time a new mo uh, a, a new dlc comes out for it you pay full price again but you still pay the um the monthly payment each month and that goes to supporting um the game development to make it even better every single month now that doesn't that is a very 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 specific uh, one nobody's ever come close to making a model like that that's worked a lot of things have tried like for example um when the elder scrolls decided they were going to do an on an online multiplayer game um that tried to do the exact same thing and they said all right you pay for the base game there's an in-game subscription you can play for uh you can play for up to a certain level but when you put, start paying uh, this in-game subscription you get access to all the rest of the levels and everything and you get everything you want so i th i think that a lot of games go when they're looking for models they have a look at what's already out there and world of warcraft or must always come up in um monetary business meetings because a lot of games seem to want to go for that model but it's something very unique to world of warcraft that no other game has managed to pull off successfully I yeah think Tried, they've it's, never gotten there it's interesting um i believe me and you talked about this i can't remember if it's just a general kind of like conversation that we had or if it was in a video or a podcast or anything like that possibly but we talked about world of warcraft and we talked about the dlc setup with that subscription mm. and I think we were talking... In fact, I think it was in our Future of the Division video, possibly. I'm not 100% sure. It but might have been. we were talking about it and how... If the Division had... It, I think this... Yeah, I think it was. Okay. I think I suggested that possibly the Division could do a form of monthly or yearly subscription where the game kind of like evolved over the years and you only had like the division you didn't have the division two the division three the division four however mm. much they want to milk it yeah, they, they could pay a form of subscription which would act as a season pass um for all intents and purposes which means that you will get this extra content in the subscription but uh, thinking about it i'm not sure if that would work in theory it could work because the division is a game which can have quite a bit of expansion because it has a storyline which can be followed for quite a longish period of time you could include different cities you could include different areas like Central Park, Lower Manhattan, etc. Um, or you could even include whole brand new cities across the world, like London and things like that. You could expand it so much. Mm. They could There's just be developing with the Division title instead of making more and more and more. The game looks beautiful as it is itself, but then you have a look at it and you think, hang on, this game is online, what did I talk about earlier? Free DLC for online. And I'm, I know that World of Warcraft does it very well. However, I'm not it's, sure it's... if the Division could pull it off. Simply See... because they have that season pass set up already. 
and you can see how the player base has already dropped off. Only the gamers that actually play the game still would sign up to that membership. Yeah. When, I, when, I, when I say about the World of Warcraft, like its model, I'm not. Like I'm not telling, I'm not saying I'm endorsing it or saying this is an excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I personally, I, I tried the, I tried Warcraft, um, and it got really boring and rep uh, re repetitive. Uh, um, when I got to level twenty, and then when I got to level twenty, it was like, oh, by the way, you need to go through and do all of this stuff. Um, to you need to get all these subscription things before you're allowed to go anywhere near uh, the rest of this game. And I was like, ah, oh, well, then there's no point because oh, I wasn't enjoying it up until uh, up until you made me do that. Um, but World of Warcraft, uh, what I was trying to get across was World of Warcraft's the only the only game that could get away with that. There is no, I don't think ever there will be another game that will that, uh, that will come out be as successful as world of warcraft is um and ha and then go um oh yeah you have to pay for the base and you have to pay for a monthly subscription have fun with that because nobody nobody's going to get away with it world of warcraft can get away with it because it's world of warcraft that's the yeah. when it's, it's it's like saying why is bruce wayne batman because he's batman that's it there's yeah. a, you got no respect. It's just because he's Batman, and because it's World of Warcraft. So you can, that's it's a subscription model which can it's well it's just a, a monetary model that can only work for World of Warcraft. Nothing else can ever pick it up or even try to. A lot of things have, but they failed. So I, something like that for the division would be interesting, and I'd like to see the division one game just it. It morphs over time. You can play on several different servers where there's different places in the world. Um, there's different areas that you can go to. They evolve it massively. I'd love that, but I don't think it would happen uh, uh, because something like that is going to be really difficult to add in. And what, uh, what's the point of getting a disc? You might as well get a code. Yeah. Um, with uh, if you if so if you're going to do something like that because everything then you'd want all of it on a server somewhere where it's easily accessible and changeable and all you need to do is download something that says yes i can go on to this server yeah. so there's i i see where you're coming from with this but i really don't think that it's gonna I, happen. I, I i doubt it will happen but yeah. it, it's it's games like tom Clancy's the division which could possibly if implemented correctly at a reasonable price could yeah. possibly if done properly pull it off games like battlefield could never pull anything like that off simply because it's never been something that has been accepted amongst the fps community and yeah. it probably never will be a lot of the first person shooters are going free to play with the dlc side of stuff and in some cases mm. some fps games are actually going free to play but then you have the founder packs you have the micro dlcs and things like that mm. alongside it which boosts the kind of like um amount of monetary revenue that the company gets they can do the extra content along the way um i i think that I think that paid DLC is something that people are getting bored of. I think that it I th it started to rise in 2005-2006, I think, if I remember correctly. Around the time of the original Modern Warfare, I believe. And since then, it's kind of like built up upon itself and developers have taken their own stances on it publishes the thought hmm we might be able to do a bit more of a cash grab here let's yeah. do this and the community has always been very vocal that they want free dlc because they don't see why they should be paying for content that they see as cut from the game which in most cases it probably isn't the first dlc tends to be in the works when they're releasing the game but um when they're just about finishing off with the base game however the other dlcs haven't even been thought about at that point because yeah. 
they're focusing on releasing the game. So I, I don't yeah. agree with the comments of people saying, hey, it's been cut from the game. But I do agree that multiplayer DLC should be free because mm. it does in inevitably and uh, divide the player base. You have a look at Battlefield, for example. Battlefield 4 went down to £5 the other week. And as part of the road to Battlefield, um, they have been giving away every single DLC in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline for free to everyone. The player base is at its highest since two years ago. Wow. That's, I'm not that's... joking. I'm having a look at the stats right now for you guys. But Battlefield 4 player stats, this is the three-year-old game, 125,000 players on at this moment in time, with 50,000 on PS4, 32,000 on Xbox One, about 7,000 on 360, 19,000 on PS3, and 30,000 roughly on PC. That's a three-year-old game. You have a look at Battlefield Hardline, which is a bit of a spin-off and isn't particularly fun, as some people would say it. It's currently 27,000. That's almost 110,000 players difference. Okay, Hardline didn't do particularly well, but Battlefield 4, however, is at one of its high points. You then have a look at Battlefield 3. Battlefield 3 is still with players, but it's nowhere near in a considerable yeah. kind of like number. It's yeah. about 20,000 or so. However, most people regard Battlefield 3 as one of the best entries to the franchise. Well, you have yeah. a look at a more recent game. This is just finishing off with this little um, thing. Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront was hyped about so much last year. Current number of players, 46,000. Yeah. The big difference, Battlefield 4 has had a reasonable amount of free DLC, has been supported very well for three years, mm. and has had free DLCs dropped, people are hyped for the next Battlefield game, Battlefield 1 out in October, so it's doing well. Battlefield Hardline didn't have any free DLC drop, the sales didn't do particularly well, and um, is meh. Okay, but okay. has only been out for a year. Star Wars Battlefront has been out for six months. Almost a That's... third of the player base of Battlefield 4, and people didn't particularly like Star Wars Battlefront because it didn't have as much content as they were expecting. They've yeah. listened and they're working on it apparently for the next title in the Battlefield, Battlefield franchise, which is out next year. Battlefront, sorry. So it will be interesting to see the way that they go with it. But yeah, free DLC does make a huge difference to the player base as Battlefield yeah. 4 has shown in the recent weeks and months with the free DLCs going out. Yeah. I... I, li I I have just thought of another uh, another game, which you might be very familiar. Um, the latest installment in the Hitman series. Oh now, God, that's no, really no! Nice to me, that they have just gone. Well, here's a base game which includes one main mission. Oh, and next month we'll give you another mission. Oh, next month we'll give you another map. And it just seems like they're spoon feeding us a I... game. It wasn't even finished. That I never... wonder, I wonder, I really do wonder about that game. I'm Square pretty... Enix, I'm I used to regard as a developer that I loved. Like, I love the Just Cause franchise. Some of the games that Square Enix yeah. have made have been some of the best games. I'm not holding back from saying that. They're a really uh, good publisher. In my opinion, I don't know what it's yeah. like working for them, and I've not played all of their games, so possibly there are some, there probably are some bad things somewhere. But Hitman is a game which I was excited for. I played Hitman Absolution, and I loved it. That's the reason why I picked up the Hitman franchise and was hyped for the next Hitman release. With mm. two or three months to launch, 
uh, they made a sudden announcement. Whether this was planned from the start and they were just trying to get people's attention originally, or if this was something that really did just come into play because they wanted to do it, or they really couldn't release the game all at once. Yeah. Um, I have absolutely no idea. But basically what they've done is they have done an episodic game. Now, episodic games work when they're done properly. This yeah. hasn't been done properly. Telltale do a marvellous job of it. Life oh, is yes. Strange is a marvellous um, example of a game which works well in an episodic format. Mm. Hitman just doesn't work being episodic. Now, they've been yeah. doing content, um, I believe they've said monthly, and they've been doing these escalations, which uh, missions which are only available for 48 hours, and they've got episode 1 out, they've got episode 2 out, they've got episode 3 out, they're working on 4, they're working on 5, they're working on 6, and I think it goes up to 7, and they'll all be out by then the year. Don't worry. You just don't get the full experience straight away when you pay 50 quid for it, because we're not going to be releasing it until uh, the end of the year, and tough shit if you're on um, disc, by the way, because we won't release any content to you until the end of the year. I don't care if you're a huge Hitman fan and you want to play the game and you have a poor internet connection or you don't, you can't download our 20 gigabyte game for our first episode at launch because your internet provider has capped you at 2 gigabytes per month. We don't care. We just want to release the game now and in a unfinished state and you can buy it as any year if you want it on disc um yeah i wasn't particularly happy with hitman i got a refund and then i got offered a review code just a day or two after not knowing that um uh i was possibly going to be offered one when i pre-ordered it so I played a bit more of it, and I still haven't got past the first mission now, as in the Paris Fashion Week um, I've, I'm mission. Str I've struggled, I've str about, I've struggled I've, with I've, it, I've, and if, if the way that they're going with the Hitman franchise is episodic, insanely hard, and not really giving you much freedom as to what you do... I'm going to just abandon the franchise. That it, That's yeah. honestly how I feel. Hitman yeah. Absolution, it's... you could you had a lot of freedom as to what you could do. Yeah. With Hitman The Full Experience, as it's called, or Episode 1, Episode 2, however you buy it, um, you kind of, like, get stuck because there are specific paths, specific routes, specific things that you have to do to complete the mission. But if you get spotted once... And shot with a bullet once. Game over. Restart the game from the beginning. We don't care. Yeah. I have not, I, I'm not a happy bunny with it. But no. some games do pull it off. Like you've... It's, actually, it's actually very surprising. Um, with, a, with the Hitman one. Um, I decided that I was going to play it. Um, I played for... Um, I think I think in total it's probably somewhere in the region of about four hours. It's probably more than that because I'm thinking of time that I've actually played the game and not been restarting it it's because I've been shot in the back of the head or something. Um, the it starts off very well. It starts off very true Hitman um, style. Gives you quite a few areas to go to, quite a few ways you can do certain things, and that's all good. The uh, with uh, that, that's just with the training mode. As soon as they hit you with the um, with the Paris mission, my goodness, you you spend about you spend about your first, I would say about three or four um, attempts, just trying to figure out, okay, where do these characters go and how can I get to certain areas? And I've realised that you can only get to cer some areas just by luck or if you have the right clothing or if you have the right character if you find the right thing there is one of the one of the ways is you have to go past some guards to get up the stairs 
um, to go uh, into the top of the mansion. There's two ways up. There's one you can go uh, up to one of two stairs, um, or you can go up uh, through an outside hatch uh, into the attic area. Uh, now, both of these are awful, because if you go uh, to get up the stairs, you have to go as a... Uh, as a character uh, as a character who is in one of the bidding things and you can't go as him if you wait too long because if you wait too long doing other things then his character's already gone up there and you've missed your opportunity and then if you try and go up using the attic area it's full of guards you take out one guard really stealthily there's hardly anywhere to hide him hide his body so you take his his clothing and you decide okay i'm just going to stroll in because everybody's going to go oh i'm in that outfit it's fine if you get too close to some of the other guards they spot you and you're dead you can't escape from some of the things i've tried multiple ways i got to the point where i was almost out of the door and then some a random character just turned up out of nowhere and shot me and that was it that was the end of it it's too close to being um, in uh, all packed together you have to do it a certain way otherwise you're not but it's quite interesting i when i did one of the 48 hour contracts um i managed to do that so easily it was it was laughable how easy that was and i haven't tried it, any of them i haven't it, tried it wasn't part of the main mission at all it was just one of these um he, we brought out this new monaco pack or something like that. i can't remember which one it was i think it was the third mission and they brought out the character for it and you had to assassinate him and it was absolutely fantastic because there were so many ways you could do it um it, you only get to do it once but there were so many opportunities that i found that i could use to actually take out this guy um but it took him a while for him to turn up so i ended up taking out quite a few people beforehand um but it was quite it was quite fun because when he did actually turn up um all i had to do was i had to wait for him to get into a room wait for him to walk into a certain point because I've killed the character who was supposed to come meet him. So he's just stuck in a loop of looking, uh, of waiting for the character to turn up. So all I did was I, sh I shot him through a window and then just strolled away. It was perfect. And I felt like an actual hitman. I felt like yeah, I was a... Yeah, like you did in Hitman Absolution. That... That's what want that's what I wanted. That's what I was yeah. hoping the entire game to be. There would be a clear there would be like multiple ways you could do certain things and then you'd kill yourself. There your would time. be stealth ways and there would be no stealth ways, kind of yes. thing. Yeah. It would be great. But the uh but the first mission really kills your um Hitman experience if you don't get very lucky or you don't get it right. They may have updated it since I've played, mm. but I really struggle to want to go yeah, back. I I had it was. I have kind of given up on that game. Um, I probably will pop onto it once or twice again in the future, but I gave up with it a while ago. But I think overall to round up, it's been a yeah. bit of an elongated uh, has. podcast episode. But it's a, it's a long it's a long subject to talk about. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm just, oh, I'm um, just going to talk a little bit about it because it's it's such a big controversial issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... I th I I think that I think in some ways that we both unanimously agree that multiplayer free DLC is probably the best way to go. Yeah. Story, if it's just a little bit of added added extra content, go for the um uh free addition to the game because or, or a low cost or a very low cost or a very or a very low cost like three maybe four pounds um, i would say more of a five ten pound region personally well because some it... of the destiny ones are worth about ten pounds i'd say the destiny ones are decent maybe ten fifteen yeah but yeah but you have like, a look at some some like people that release like just an extra car and charge you 20 quid. Um, that is ridiculous. But something like if Battlefield were releasing a bunch of new maps and a brand new mode that would expect to all the maps, but they wanted to get a bit of money for it, I'd say a five is worth it. I'd yeah, say a five. Yeah, I mean, they do 12 quid at the moment for four, maybe five maps um, per DLC and a new game mode. So 
I I think that that is good value for money, but it just doesn't work with the player base setup. Um, yeah. I think that storylines should have the lower end of the kind of like DLC stuff. You have a look at Dying Light. Dying Light had a season pass. The first two missions in the season pass were terrible. You then have a look at the following, and it was double the size of the base game map for half the price. Yeah. Like, and that's when the player that, base started picking up again. And it confuses me the way that they did that. The first two DLCs, in my opinion, were dreadful. I hardly touched them. They weren't really worth it. You then look at the following, which was basically, in in all inclusive purposes, it was basically Dying Light 2, because it added so much content to the game. It was like a whole new world, pretty much. Um... But it was half the price of the base game. So, it, like, I kind of, like, I was like, okay, this justifies it because you get double the amount of the map that you had before added to the game, and then you also have all of these extra missions, a whole new storyline, you get Doom Buggies, etc. It's only 25 quid. I love the storyline in the base game. I'm going to pick it up. So... I think that it kind of like depends with storyline games, uh, multiplayer games, DLCs should be free for the maps and the game modes, but if they do need the extra revenue, they can always add the um, micro DLCs, which per personally I see fine because they're optional, you don't have to get them, um, or have a season pass available. As an option which as gives you a few extra bonuses possibly xp bonus whatever it's a way that rainbow six siege has done it is very well done but then it also gives you possibly two weeks early access to the free content that's launching in the game that works yeah it's going to well. be interesting seeing what happens with battlefield one no yeah. post content details post launch content have been detailed at all and with Sony and Microsoft pulling out of Gamescom press conferences this year, I wonder when we're going to hear about it. We'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah. But hopefully Battlefield 1 will go in the right steps. Because mm. if they do it correct, Battlefield 1 is definitely going to steal the show this year. Call of Duty yeah. are getting you to pay 50 quid for a game which was released 10 years ago. Or something and ridiculous best like that. Game. And that is the best feature of the game because, as all of the COD fanboys have said, oh, I'm going to Battlefield this year. Of course, I'll possibly have a video or two of COD, but Battlefield is where I'm at, where it's at this year. I I just want the boots on the ground gameplay. I don't care about the jetpacks and stuff. Um, I might buy it just because I want the COD remaster but I don't particularly want to spend 50 quid on it, so we'll see. And that's the COD fanboys that have been playing for donkey's years. So it will be interesting to see what Battlefield does. Um, yeah, um, it's it's been a good discussion. I think yeah, it's that... been a long discussion, but it's been worth. I think I think it's been worth the time. Yeah, definitely. Let us know what you think about DLCs down below in the comments section. Do you think that multiplayer DLCs should be free? Do you think that story DLCs should be of a lower cost? Or do you think that they should be free? Or do you agree with the current setup with the majority of games at the moment where you buy a season pass which costs you 40 quid per year? every year so you end up spending about 90 pounds on your game overall at launch or at some point down the line what 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 do you think what yeah what... Well, even if you have something a uh, new thought on it we'd, we'd definitely like to hear it i'd be interested yeah to hear what you guys want to say what um what what do you think publishers are going to start doing more and more personally i think they're going to go the free routes We've seen quite a few of them starting to take that stance, um, starting to listen to the 
general consensus of the DLC setup, but not all of them have necessarily listened. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Gaming Masters Let's Talk podcast. We've been talking about the free versus paid DLC situation amongst video games. Next time in the podcast, we're going to probably be starting to talk about Gamescom 2016 a little bit more in detail, and we hope you stick around to hear from us then. Goodbye. Later.